All right. So thank you to folks that are watching this right now. Um, given that no one's in the room, so we're we're guessing that everyone's going to watch this after the fact and get some good stuff out of it. So my name is Blake Calhoun. I worked in the School of Engineering and the Office of Undergraduate Programs. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Success. I'm joined here by just a couple of our wonderful directors for diversity, equity, and inclusion. They're going to talk to you about their role, answer a few questions, um, and then we'll do a little bit of prompted kind of faux Q&A. Maybe. Um, and this will be obviously recorded, but this is on the Open House website. Um, and also on this page, you can find other recorded and archived events that have happened over the past three days, which would be yesterday, today, and tomorrow. All right. So with that, I'm going to go to each panelist and ask them to introduce themselves. And given that students might see your faces up close next fall, you could also share where students can find you. It's dawned to me that so many people don't even know have a landmark uh, over a whole year, people haven't even been here. So um, our office is in Thornton Hall A-Wing, which you'll become familiar with. It's probably one of the first places you'll walk into when you come on grounds to the engineering building. As soon as you come into the front doors, click a right and you have found us. I'll pass it to Keith next. Hey everybody, hey, I'm Keith Williams. I'm in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of happy faces um, this next fall because we've all been behind face masks <laughs> for a while. Really looking forward to seeing you all um, in the fall. One place that you would probably see me is on the on the first floor of Rice Hall. So maybe one of the first places that you see when you step into the engineering school area. Um, my department is very interested in improving diversity um, and inclusion. And, um, and one of the efforts that we've been working on is engaging students in research as soon as possible. So almost from day one, when you set foot you know, that's an effort of mine that's very much ongoing. It's been complicated by what's going on with the pandemic and so forth. But we'd really like to help students realize that the college experience is much more than just sitting and taking classes, passively receiving information. It's really about participating in labs, getting to know a lot of people, getting to know some of our wonderful faculty. Um, I think that's all I should say for now. Maybe I should pass the baton on. Or Blake, would you like to do it? Pass it on. You got it. I'll pass it to Kevin James, just because he's the next person on my screen. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you, Keith. Good afternoon. My name is Kevin James. I'm a professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering here at UVA. Uh, where do I reside? Uh, I'm about a 12 minute walk down uh, the, the road from Rice Hall, from Thornton Hall in the medical school campus. And so you're uh, not likely to run into me on the, on the engineering school, but if you happen to major in biomedical engineering, you'll see a lot of me down, uh, down along at the School of Medicine. In my role as uh, the co-chair of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee in Biomedical Engineering, one of the things that uh, we've done for about a year now has been a um, discussion series called Candid Conversations, which is organized by graduate students in our biomedical engineering chapter, open to all undergraduates, faculty, postdocs, staff, uh, where we have an open conversation about diversity, equity, or inclusion issues that rotate on a month by month basis. We break out into um, virtual rooms in a Zoom format and have very honest discussions about topics ranging from social injustice, uh, transgender per persons. Um, next one we have coming up is anti-Asian se sentiment. Um, and it's been very, um, uh, community building for our department to be able to talk about these things in a safe uh, and forthright setting. And from there, I'll do the handoff to Derek. Hey, <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Good evening um, and welcome. It's good to see you and I look forward to seeing you in the fall. Uh, my name is Garrick Louis and I'm in the Department of Engineering Systems and Environment. Our department is made up of the departments of civil engineering, systems engineering. And I also am in the department of engineering and society. Uh, our department is very strongly committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we have a mixed committee called the DEI committee, uh, made up of faculty, staff, and graduate students who uh, lead the department's mission for diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
some of the activities that we have uh, related to DEI in our department, uh, regular open forums on issues related to race and sex and gender and other forms of identity uh, and how they affect people in the academic environment and in the workplace. We also have a very strong program on community engagement with um, the churches and with other community groups, including the 100 Black Men of Central Virginia. And uh, we also just began offering an Excellence in Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Award for undergraduate students, graduate students, staff and faculty to recognize their efforts in improving uh, our mission or drive and our mission to lead in diversity, equity, and inclusion. The department has a very strong emphasis on service learning and uh, on teamwork. And so very early in the program, students are engaged to work together in teams on different types of projects. And at the end of our program in the fourth year, uh, we the students divide into different teams, usually between four to six students and work together on a project that's sponsored by an external client. And they have one year to complete that project. Um, and so those are a couple of things about the our department. Like I said, I look forward to seeing you in the hallway in the fall. And I'm glad to be able to answer your questions, any that you have today. And you can email me with any that you have after today. Thank you. And I'll turn it over now to Chloe. Thank you. Uh, I am Chloe Dedek. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Uh, we have a mechanical engineering building that you might find me in uh, in the fall, um, but I also spend a lot of my time in the Aerospace Research Lab. So this is a, a research building that's located on Observatory Hill. Uh, so if you're here in the fall and you're looking for a, a, a nice place to go for a walk, um, this is the place to go. And then you might stop by and see the, the research that we have going on as well. Um, in terms of our department, uh, we've been working this past year on increasing the conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, to, to try to improve our overall culture. Uh, and we're really looking for feedback from alumni and uh, faculty and staff, and then most importantly, students. Uh, so these conversations are really centered around uh, graduate and undergraduate students as well. And one of the uh, initiatives that we are uh, working on as a result is, is really showing um, through multiple ways um, the students what you can do with engineering that's not necessarily what you might think of when you think of an engineer. So we as engineers learn to be problem solvers and uh, we're trying to show you by demonstrating with, with student projects, uh, current students, alumni, uh, what you can do with your engineering degree uh, that goes beyond, um, if you think of mechanical engineering, goes beyond turning wrenches after you graduate. Uh, so really thinking about, about that to, to show you that there's lots of things that you can do to impact society. Um, and that's one of the things that we think is important moving forward. So I'll turn it back to Blake. <laughs> hey, thank you all so much. Um, these are some of the all-star faculty that we have here. Um, I know like I email with Chloe often. It's like me the first time I've seen your face, Chloe, which is funny because of the past year, but we're emailing weekly about a different person all the time. So. We care here um, and part of the questions which I put in the chat so folks will know kind of where we're headed. Um, and so if they have additional questions, um, feel free to add them in, but you'll kind of know what we're gonna cover kind of broadly. Um, but the purpose of having this is that we want you all to see that the messages we have with diversity and inclusion run deep. They're not just surface messages, um, that we have people who are actually dedicated to working on this, who also have teams and communities and departments who are also dedicated and supportive of these efforts. Um, and also how diversity, equity, inclusion isn't just about like, oh, what am I going to do? Who am I going to meet? But no, like what kind of opportunities might I have? Um, what advice might you have? So we're really excited to have the perspective of all of our panelists today um, to answer these questions. So most of you kind of answer it the ways your departments are leading some diversity and inclusion efforts. So maybe we'll get to the second question, which is what advice do you have for incoming first year students uh, to make UVA a place where they can thrive? Let's go back to the beginning and I'll kick it back to you, Keith. Okay, so I can take the lead on I have that. to unmute. Oh, you want to? 
you want to take the lead, Garrick? Sorry, I was muted there oh, for a sec. I go ahead. Um, I think that one thing I would definitely advise students to do, and it's a big step for some students aren't used to doing it, is to get to know your professors a lot better. So go to the office hours and um, get them to know you and you get to know them. The same thing in some of the classes, they are graduate uh, teaching assistants. It would be good to get to know them as well. Those can be useful mentors to you and definitely uh, people and resources you can turn to as you progress through your uh, career. And if you run into problems, it's good to have somebody with influence on your side. So, and for, for all those reasons, I think it's a, a good thing. The second thing, and you probably have heard this in the recruitment uh, pro process, is to be aware of the Office of African American Affairs and make your time to get to know the people in that office and familiarize yourselves with their programs. They have a fantastic program called the Peer Advising Program. And uh, that's where students support each other as, peer, as peers and mentors. And then there's the faculty student uh, mentorship program, uh, which is also a nice way to find someone else uh, who is on your side. And so those are just a few of the things I would advise the incoming first year student to seek out as soon as possible when they get here. Uh, turn it over to you, Keith. So um, this would be advice to my first year self. Um, I wish that I had gotten to know more people right off the bat in the first year. Um, I, like uh, a lot of incoming engineers, was probably pretty shy and just didn't get to know very many people. And so unfortunately, I didn't reach out to all the various communities that were available. Um, please take a look at the list of communities that, um, that Blake and her colleagues have provided can realize that even if you're a shy person like I was back then, um, that there are ways for you to get to know people, to break the ice and get to know different kinds of people. Um, I wish I'd known that sooner. <laughs> it was several years into my college experience that I realized, oh my gosh, I'm surrounded by people from every walk of life, from every, you know, all around the world. And I just really loved it once I realized that. But I think for the first year student, it can become a little bit intimidating at first. Like, how do I get to know all these people? Um, and you may also perceive when you arrive that some students already know each other. They may come from the same school, for example. Um, that sort of um, tendency for people to cluster together with people they know or people from the same area will gradually change and you will get to know people from all over the country and all, even all around the world. Kevin, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I'll, I'll expand on a couple things. Um, that uh, both you and Garrick said on the topic of uh, communities and, and, and things. I think that uh, the students that I've seen thrive here, especially early, get into a mode of um, different types of communities based around different subspheres of what it means to be a student, college student here. Um, I think sphere number one is your education. That's a really important one. And so the students that you share classes with, these are your colleagues. They're the ones that this can be a team building exercise to succeed to get together in the courses that we offer. Um, so that's one place where you can build a community. Second is in, let's say, your extracurricular, not a whole suite of extracurricular activities, but one thing that rounds you out as an individual. Uh, don't put too much extra stuff on your plate because the curriculum is challenging. Um, and then the third, what, uh, what will I call it? Like your outlet, you know, the thing that you do to just be able to navigate the other spheres effectively. Oftentimes those three different things engage different communities, whatever those are. And the, the sooner that students get those three pieces uh, in order, the, the quicker they're on to a path to, to, to thriving here. So I encourage you to explore different types of communities and spheres and figure out what makes sense. I guess over to Chloe, if she has anything to add. Sure. Um, kind of along the same themes, I would say that something to keep in mind when, when you come is that you're not the only person in your shoes. Um, everyone around you are feeling, at least if you, if you throw a stone uh, walking around outside, you're going to find somebody else that's feeling the same way that you're feeling. Uh, and so what I mean by that is don't be afraid to ask questions of other people. Uh, so going back to what Garrick said, go to office hours and ask your professors questions. I know my office hours are really boring, 
unless students come and ask me questions. Uh, so it's it's definitely encouraged and you should take advantage of that to, to get your questions out there. And I'm a person that I'm always af afraid to ask questions. So um, speaking as somebody who's afraid to ask questions, uh, try to get over, over that fear and, and approach that fear and then get your questions out there. You're, you're gonna find that people want to help you and wanna answer questions. And then the other thing um, in terms of uh, thinking that other people around you are feeling the same thing as you, um, if you show up to, to your lectures, your first classes, uh, introduce yourself to the other students around you. That's how you're going to meet people. Um, if you have people in your, your classes that you're meeting and you can work in groups on, on problems and homework assignments, uh, it's going to make the process a, a lot more straightforward and it's going to make the process more fun too. Uh, so you might be afraid to introduce yourself to, to the person next to you, but that person might be sitting there saying, oh, I really wish I had somebody to work on this assignment with me. Uh, so be the person that, that steps out and, and introduce yourself, ask questions. All great advice. Thank you all so much. Um, you'll hear, so if you kind of found like just a random group of faculty and staff and asked them this question, I'm thankful to say we'd all have a very similar answer, which means that we all care deeply <laughs> about you all and understand what it takes for you all to succeed. No one's gonna say, just put your head down and work. Um, no one's gonna say that here, right? Um, because it's not a winning strategy, right? Um, so if I could add in just a couple of things and tie everything folks are saying together, a community is very important to have. Um, no one does anything here alone, my body. Um, and it's not impressive to do things alone. That's kind of a whole over from high school. Uh, sometimes we said, oh, I have to ask for help. That's a weakness. It's a bad thing if I need help with my homework. Here it's expected. And in fact, your office is gonna get prompted so if you have a group project, you're not just being evaluated on the final report, but you're being evaluated on how well did you manage some different people? That's a, a critical skill to have later on and something that employers and all types of folks will look for going forward. So having a community, not being afraid to ask questions, not being afraid to engage, talk to your faculty. You just heard four faculty say like, I wanna get to know you. Consider this a random sample that's representative of everyone else will meet. They wanna know you. The most that they know about you is the most that you know about them. Right? And so someone's got to make that move and come and get connected. Um, I'll say another way for folks to thrive is not to think that when they get here, they should just get good grades. That, that is the ultimate goal. Right? Um, and it's not. Like when you look long term, grades are nice, but it's far more important to say, I learned something in that class, as opposed to saying, well, I got an A, but I don't actually know how to like code. Right? Like I, nobody wants to hear that. You know, we want to hear like, hey, what did you learn? What type of experiences that you have? And so de-emphasizing grades, which is easier said than done, something that my office and Office of Undergraduate Programs, we work really closely with students to help them have healthier approaches to school um, and to get engaged beyond the classroom. So thank you all for reflecting on that. Hopefully I tied that together well. Um, the next question, are there any hidden opportunities that you feel incoming students should know about? I'll go ahead, Chloe, since you're the um, I might pass it to Keith. He nodded his head quickly. Let me give you a little, <laughs> a little time to think. <laughs> okay. Well, I was just going to say hidden opportunities. One of the things that I tell students, and they always act a little bit surprised, is I tell them to go visit other classes. Go visit advanced classes. You can actually go into it a very advanced class. Um, one piece of advice that I would give this is a you know when you after you arrive and you start wondering which major to select. Um, let me urge you not to make your decision based on the very first class you take in a subject, you know, in the 1000 level type classes, those can be interesting. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but where I would suggest that you do, what I would suggest that you do is drop into some advanced classes, get to know some students who are a couple of years ahead of you. They can be really wonderful advisors for you and help you understand what different programs they like. So I would say that's a hidden resource. It's not something we really advertise, but it's available to you. Um, let's see, who should I pick on next? And so Chloe. <laughs> yes, I, I came up with an idea. Um, I, I don't know how hidden this is necessarily, but maybe it's not something that you're thinking of uh, coming into to UVA. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research that different professors are doing on campus and you can get involved with those, th those activities um, through coursework and also through summer research opportunities. Uh, and so that's something to, to start thinking about. Uh, again, this is maybe gonna be more relevant after you start um, deciding what kind of engineer you want to be. Um, 
but keep that in mind that this is going to be a great opportunity for you to, to test out the, the things that you're learning in classes uh, and, and get some real world um, hands-on experience with some of, some of this. Um, I'm always looking for students to, to come work in my lab for, for periods of time as well. Uh, so that's something that isn't always advertised but if you're getting out there asking questions and interacting with the faculty members, that's a great way that you can say, hey, I'm interested in, in practicing what I'm learning in this class. What do you do for research? And a lot of us have research projects and labs that um, are, are ongoing. So that's something that I would suggest. Uh, Garrick? Hey, thank you, Chloe. Uh, I think there are lots of hidden opportunities, but I do wanna go back to something that Kevin uh, said because it's so important it's necessary to have the right balance between your academics, which is really your top priority, and then the other activities that balance you out as an individual. Um, some of the hidden opportunities, I think the first one is in student organizations. Uh, we have several here in the engineering school. Some are affiliated with professional engineering societies. So you get an opportunity to interact with those societies from a student perspective. Uh, the, the more hands-on ones like engineers going global that actually do projects and you get a chance to work with engineers from different disciplines on different types of projects, both based here in the community and some projects that are international. And then there's some that uh, the student affiliate with the professional organizations that are really about networking and again, all have a very strong service orientation. So those are good opportunities to branch out and apply your engineering skills and your interpersonal skills. And of course, build your professional network. I like Keith's advice to explore other classes. And you know, it's been a long time since I was an undergraduate, but I still remember the most enjoyable class I've ever taken was a class in art appreciation. And I got to go to museums and art galleries, and I got to meet, I got to go into the art studios on campus and meet some of the students in the art program. Very eye-opening, made me <clears throat> wish to some degree that I had some of that aptitude, but unfortunately I don't. And then um, if, you, if you do, and if it fits your um, personality, I always take, the opportunity to volunteer and give back. And there are several ways you could do that. There are many student organizations that do volunteer work in the community. And um, there are several community organizations. If you belong to a church, you can find a church group that does that type of work. And that gives you a different type of fulfillment and sense of being that again, would balance off your life on campus and the sometimes quite intensive effort you have to put into your coursework. So those are some of my hidden hidden gems for incoming students. And with that, I will defer to Kevin to wrap us up. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll add one variant to what Keith um, started us off with. And that is the opportunity of first year students to learn about the potential majors well before the official major declaration near the end that we're, we're kind of in that we just are out of that season uh, right now for our, our first year students. And what I wanted to add is um, the overall approachability of the faculty in the engineering school. So you can combine these together. I, I would be confident you could cold email most of the faculty. And if you wanted to meet with them to talk about what it's like to be in a major X or major Y, they'll get back to you and they'll arrange a meeting go to their office, you can talk with them, sitting in on the classes, like Keith said, open to everybody, just find it. If you want to sit in and, and, and see what it's like to be a second year student in major X or major Y, of course, um, the priority is the classes you're actively enrolled in. But anytime you see a window to be able to take a peek at those that much more easily, you'll be able to make an informed decision when, you, when the deadline to make the major decision does come up in the uh, in the spring. And so that's one right early on, you can kind of keep your, your eye out for. But there's other things also, seminars or tutorials or workshops. These are all open to the UVA community and you can get on mailing lists and be aware of them at any point uh, in your uh, time, time with us. So. 
Great advice. Yeah. Um, that reminds me, Kevin, I, I, this question came up earlier today and my top tip was to check your email. Uh, so many things come in through email and through newsletters and it's easier said than done, especially this time of the year. It's like, oh, just check your email when you have so many. Uh, but that's really a place where we get things out, like things that are free, low cost things, opportunities that just kind of come in passing. And yeah, I don't know anyone particular to send it to. So we'll put in a newsletter. Um, people send us things to put in the newsletter. It's the best way that we have to communicate with a large group of you all at the same time. So check your email. Um, another piece that I'll add and kind of tie everyone together is that as many people as you can find, tell them what you're interested in. You talk with one professor, tell them what you're kind of thinking. You talk to a, a friend, tell them what you're thinking. You go to a club group, tell them kind of what you think you might want to do. Um, you never know who people know and what opportunities they know about. Um, there are many times where a student has said in passing to me like, oh, I think it might be cool to do research about this. And then two days later, I'm like brushing my teeth and I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally know someone who's doing something similar to this. I should have these people. And that's how so many things happen organically like that. So. Don't be afraid to, to reach out, ask those questions, um, cold email people, um, talk to folks in departments, talk to other students, but as many people as you can share what you're currently thinking about if it's helpful. Um, also to add in, there is no one script of how to get through UVA successfully in UVA engineering. So I know you might be hearing about some common involvements like honor or student council, or university guide service. Um, I should do one of those things. I should do research. I should study abroad. I should, <laughs> should do all these things. You know, why wouldn't I? That's what everybody's doing. Um, there are people who do all of those things. There are people who do none of those things and they are all successful in one way or another. Um, it's very important that as soon as you can, when you get here, you do things because you really enjoy them and they're gonna be something that you find value in. Uh, that's what'll help make something sustainable. That's what'll, when you go to that job interview, you can talk about it easily and with a lot of depth because you really enjoy it. You don't just do it because you think it's a popular thing, right? So know that there's a million and one things to do here. Um, happily, that's one of the great things about here. I'm not complaining at all. Um, okay. Next question. Um, I don't think I see any other questions. Um, could you all talk a little bit about what excellence through diversity means to you? Um, and for folks that don't know, I use that phrasing. It's something you'll see all around engineering. It's one of our values, something that we say often to each other that we believe deeply in excellence through diversity. So I wanted to ask you all how that's come up in your departments, in your particular practice as faculty. And anyone can jump in here. So as mentioned, I, um, I teach, um, I'm one of the first faces that first year engineering students would see a lot of them in our intro engineering course. And I begin on day one, um, emphasizing how important it is to get to collect different ideas, different viewpoints from different students who, who come from diverse backgrounds. And, um, and we start off really on the first day, realizing that if you had an engineering team that all felt the same way about a subject, that all had the same opinions, that all had the same experiences, that you wouldn't be able to, when you go into the brainstorming phase to try to, to build, a, to do a project or to try to design something new, you'd be really quite limited. And so um, I really enjoy, that's one of the most enjoyable aspects of my class is being able to introduce students from completely different walks of life. For example, an international student meeting a domestic US student or um, someone from a large city environment meeting someone from a rural area or something like that. And, and right off the bat, you start realizing that people have different experiences. And because they have different experiences, they have different ideas and different uh, ways of approaching a problem. And, um, and so a big part of what we stress is how do you form a better team, a team that has the, the likelihood to come up with more diverse ideas and be able to bounce different kinds of things off each other. So it's a very enjoyable part of the teaching process for me just to be able to introduce diverse students to each other. I saw Kevin nodding his head. Yep, I'm gonna amplify and tell some more stories along those lines. I'd say it's succinctly, it's the richness of perspectives heard. And, and so when you get it right, and so all those words is deliberate, right? And so you have the richness with the diversity and, and the perspectives like Keith was uh, saying, but we wanna have those heard in a classroom setting, in a design setting, in a debate setting. What does that involve? We should be able to disagree, to debate, to wrestle with the ideas that we're throwing around because that's how the final plan is better at the end if everybody's heard. Um, and, I, and just one anecdote I can relate to that is uh, this is holds at our graduate student level, but 
uh, translation, these are your future TAs, if you happen to be a major in our, uh, in our department, ha has increased the now to be 20 composition of 20% students from underrepresented backgrounds. It has transformed our department. And uh, I see it in the graduate classes that I teach because they demand class participation. And when you see different people wrestling with, with complex ideas and the topics and trying to figure it out on their own from different angles, it's truly magical. And it can happen at the under, it happens at the undergraduate level uh, also when students get into that mode, recognizing that what they bring to the table is unique and it, it should be voiced and put alongside all of the other ideas in the, in the group. Um, and so that I think singularly is, is what that uh, phrase means to me, the banner we have hanging in my building. Uh, when I look at it, that's what I think of. So I, I will maybe also approach that same idea from a slightly different standpoint. Um, excellence through diversity helps kind of the team and the goal and the product of what you're, you're developing through, through what uh, Keith and Kevin have both said. I would also say that it helps you grow uh, so you aren't going to grow and, and develop in a vacuum or me, I'm, I'm using the royal you here. So uh, if you are encountering different people with different ideas and your thoughts are challenged, that's how you are going to grow as an individual. Um, and so that's also really important to think of um, just yourself. How can you learn and become the best person? And you're going to do that by encountering people that are different than you, that think differently than you. Uh, that we can all learn from each other in terms of our development of ideas. Uh, so I would just say that that also is a really important um, process uh, and a really important part of college, going to college and, and growing on your own uh, is really going to, to be amplified if you have the um, chance to, to meet and work with people that have different ideas that, that look differently than you. Um, that's going to be a really important part of your, your individual growth as well. Okay, and then I would add that, um, you know, I would excellence and diversity uh, through diversity uh, to me means three things and three forms of acknowledgement. The first one is to acknowledge the exclusionary racial and sexual history of the university and that that had real and long lasting harms on the people who uh, were denied entrance in the past and on the people who are here today because of the attitudes that result from that legacy. The second part of that acknowledgement, and that derives from the first acknowledgement, is that uh, we stress that we value and appreciate everyone's presence and their earned right to be here as well as their contribution in all spheres of endeavor at the university, both academic and service, and just all the activities that students are engaged in, including athletics. And then third, we appreciate uh, our common or acknowledge our common responsibility and our shared efforts in working together to improve the university in all its dimensions, especially in its diversity dimension, and making it uh, live up or live up to its ideals or live up to the pursuit of its ideals. So those are what I think of when I think about the excellence in diversity. It's excellent in all those forms of acknowledgement. Thanks. Thanks to all of you for such thorough. Um, answers. I always love hearing people say about that too, because um, a great thing about, I think, just to phrase excellence to diversity is that we all have something to contribute to making that happen um, and making that a reality. And all of our positionalities are really important uh, to come to this. I'll answer kind of quickly for me. For me, <clears throat> um, I think part of what I think is, is changing as far as the conversation around diversity and equity is moving things from deficit-based to asset-based conversations. And so Whereas you might hear someone say, well, you don't have a parent that went to college, so you're already kind of behind, or eh, you're not the majority of the race here, so eh, you might have a tough time when you get here. Um, those are conversations that are had frequently, we call them deficit-based, so all the things that someone does not have. Um, I think excellence diversity says to me about, we want to talk about asset-based. No, you're bringing something here. Like You're not devoid of anything valuable. You're not devoid of preparation and expertise. Um, you're just as smart, you're you earned it just as much as Garrick said, um, you're earned spot here. And so 
we want to think about really intensely, what can we do to help you be here and thrive? What great skills do you already have that we can capitalize upon? as opposed necessarily to what don't you have that we can kind of supplement here. And so we want to think really deeply and encourage you all to think about that from yourselves um, and with your peers. What are some of the great things that people have that we can all be doing and learning from and growing through together? Um, not the ways that we necessarily don't have something or someone else is less of um, because of an experience they have. So that's what it means to me. It's something that I know we try to practice and we're always fine tuning and we're always looking for ways to bring even more of the best out of our students, not just academically, but socially, but developmentally, but identity based. A lot of things happen in college besides you take a few more courses. Um, it's a really pivotal point in your life, this kind of early, late teens, early 20 years. So it's something that we think really deeply about and we care deeply about. So with that said, that was the last question I had. Um, and in lieu of other questions, I think what I'll do is to this recording, I'll attach you all's contact information. And so folks don't have to kind of play it back and was that an A or a B, Did they say four or five. Um, so we'll, we'll get rid of that confusion and I'll make sure that folks have a way to find you all and folks who couldn't be here. Anything else to add before we go ahead and cut it out? I'd just like to thank you very much, Blake, for all you do. Uh, you've been a fantastic partner and um, really, really appreciate the support you provide for the students, but also for me, because uh, we're all working together as a team. And I think it's just been wonderful to work with. Yeah, I also thanks. have my thanks and appreciation um, uh, to Brian's thanks and appreciation. And uh, I want to express my excitement to meeting the new students who are coming in and getting to know their families as well. Yeah, I'll just thank everybody for watching this video or attending this, the session. It was a pleasure to answer the questions. Uh, thanks for hearing us out and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. And I think Chloe wants to do one sign off. Oh, sure. I, I'll just add in, uh, remember, I think my office hours are boring if I don't get questions. So my inbox is also boring if I only get boring emails instead of exciting emails from prospective students. So really don't hesitate to send us emails and ask questions and or just introduce yourself. So it, we really hope to see you in the fall. Thank you all. We couldn't have said it better. Please reach out. Um, well, this isn't the last time we'll ask you to do that, um, but there's never, uh, it's never too soon to do so. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Thank you all so much for lending your